Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of the heavenly father. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakakwadash, double honor to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, as teaching this word of truth and sincerity, and peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four quarters of the earth. As the opening scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, bless are the peacemakers. And what inspired this lesson was a conversation or a conversation I had with a brother uh, this week. And we were just building on having a fallout with a brother bumping heads with brothers, you know, a brother doing you wrong or you doing a brother wrong, you offending a brother or a brother's offending you. Things are um, misunderstood. Communication is uh, misunderstood. Words is misunderstood. Statements is misunderstood. You know, all fleshly, carnal, minute things, you know, but it's all um, fleshly things, right? And we have to remember Yahweh Shah, when he was on the mount or when he was doing his sermon, he was comforting Israel, right? from the problems that they were facing. He was giving them relief from the things that they was going through. And one of the things that Israel fights, or one of the demons and spirits that Jake fights, is the spirit of contention and strife. And Yahweh said, Bless are the peacemakers. Now, when you look up this word peacemaker in the Greek, Strong's G, 1518, Eri, no pios, a pot pois. It says a peacemaker, passive, loving, peace. Right? Do we have something else? All right, I wanted to get the definition of peace. It says, peace, freedom from disturbance, tranquility, a state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended. Let's look up spiritual peace, the meaning of peace. Peace is a stress-free state or of security and calmness that comes when there's no fighting or war. So Yahweh Shah said, bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, a peacemaker is a person that, as we read the definition of peace, bring tranquility, bring a calmness, ends the contention, ends the strife. You understand? Those brothers are going to be called the sons of God because they're looking at the bigger picture of things or they're trying to end the strife and the bitterness which there shouldn't be any um there shouldn't be any contention or strife or grudging between brothers but we're corruptible bodies we're in the flesh and we all have different personalities so there's going to be clashing naturally right so we have to learn how to become. Now, everybody's not going to, um, everybody isn't going to, um, I'm trying to word it right, uh, be the peacemakers, <laughs> you know, 
but that is one of the attributes of a man of the Lord. All right. Now I wanted to get these scriptures. It says, "Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of the living power." You're gonna be called the member of the elect. Okay, because. Only the elect are blessed. All right. Only the elect are going to be called the Israel of the Most High. Even though that you might be a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israel of the Most High, which is the elect, are the ones who the Most High chose to be his. The VIP of the VIP. Okay, of a special group of people, a special group of men, not just people, but men, Israelite men, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, that the Most High chose to be above the rest. This is James chapter 3, verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So we're envying and strife. Let's look up these words. Envy. A feeling of discontent. Discontented. Or resentful longing aroused. By someone else's position. Qualities or luck. So the scriptures say. Oh, hold on. It's strife. Let's look up the word strife. Strife. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues or conflicts. So, uh, um, being aroused or angry at someone's positions or qualities. Or angry or bitter disagreement over issues or conflict there is confusion in every evil work so where a person is jealous or a person is upset over someone's you know a brother the way he talks or the way a brother carry himself or you know things to that nature you mad because a brother goes into the scriptures, got more precepts, speaks louder, or he talks authority, he talks with authority, or you know, there's many, many different things that could offend or rub the brother the wrong way, right? Once again, this is all minute flesh cardinal bullshit, okay? For where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. So, having these negative thoughts or these malicious thoughts brings confusion. It brings evil works. It doesn't bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. It doesn't bring forth kingdom-mindedness, brotherhood, loving your neighbor as yourself. Okay? Because of this... Once again, minute carnal BS. All right. But the wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. All right, so the wisdom which are, which is above, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, the fear of the Lord, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, is pure. The words of the Most High is pure. It's untainted. Okay, then peaceable. Remember, peace means tranquility. It means a state of calmness. It means a state of freedom. Gentle and easy to be entreated. Okay? It's easy to receive. Once again, that's if 
the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit, resides with you. Full of mercy. That's what this truth is, full of mercy. Now, yes, it's judgment, there's lamentation, weeping and woe, there's bitterness, there's many aspects and attributes of the scriptures, but the scriptures is also merciful. Because it's correcting the wrongs, which is sin, which is transgressing the laws of the Most High. Okay? Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality. I had to look up that word, partiality. It says, unfair, bias, in favor of one thing or a person compared with another favoritism. And does not the scripture speak about um, the Most High is not a respecter of persons? So we are not supposed to be respecters of persons. Regardless of how long you've been in the truth, regardless of the relationship you build with a brother, regardless if a brother's more likable than another brother, we are not supposed to be biased. We're not supposed to have favoritism. We are supposed to hear a matter. We're supposed to hear both sides of the story and then give a judgment according to the scriptures. Okay? We ain't supposed to take sides. We're supposed to be able to hear both sides of the story and give a judgment according to the scriptures. Not according to your feelings, but according to the scriptures. You know? And if a brother was wrong you should be able to tell the brother he was wrong whether he, he's the likable brother or unlikable brother he's the brother that everybody gets along with or a brother that everybody doesn't get along with you gotta judge righteous judgment it says full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy Hypocrisy. You are saying one thing, but acting out another thing. Basically being a devil. A fork-tongued serpent. Saying one thing and meaning another thing. Matter of fact. Hypocrisy. The practice of claiming to have moral standards or beliefs to which one's old behavior does not conform. You're claiming one thing, but you're acting and living a whole nother thing. And we cannot, the fruits of the spirit, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is not about that. All right? It says without hypocrisy. That we talk, whatever we say, we have to live up to. We can't say one thing and show another thing. Your actions are saying something else. Whatever we talk, we have to live. That's why we have to talk the scriptures and we have to walk the scriptures. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Once again, blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of Yahweh Yahweh Shah. We're not supposed to be contentious. We ain't supposed to be about strife. You understand? Look at the the recent account with the ISUPK dudes. And I don't know whoever those guys were, but they walked up to the camp. Which, that's a whole other discussion. But we ain't supposed to be here at Great Millstone. We don't go to other camps to try to prove a point or try to show that we know more because that seems as if you're trying to get a name for yourself and it seems as if you're doing it for vainglory purposes. Okay? We don't do that here at Great Millstone. If we encounter these dudes, you know, on a fly, like you, you walking through your life and you run into them, or they run into you as you teach it on the streets. That's how we deal. We don't go out to camps. 
try to prove that they're wrong or we know more than them. Because at the end of the day, they're going to continue teaching and believing what they're going to believe. And we're going to teach and believe what we're going to believe. When Yahweh Shah comes, all that shit is going to come to an end. Because the ones that adore to the end is the ones that's going to be saved. All right. Next scripture. James chapter 5 verse 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. So we're not supposed to be grudging with each other. Let's look that word up. This is grudge. It says a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulted from a past insult or injury. So we ain't supposed to be holding on to shit from the past. And then when a brother does something, you get triggered and want to unleash and lash out at a brother because you still holding on to shit from the past. It says a persistent feeling of ill will or resentment resulting from a past insult or injury. If a brother did something to you, you post to talk to him and him alone. You're supposed to be able to talk to a brother to let the brother know the ought that you have with him or the offense that he caused you. You understand? It's a thin line to um, bite in your tongue. And what I mean by that is there's certain cases where you bite your tongue where, you know, you take it a low or you suffer wrongfully and things of that nature. And then it's the, the thin line. The other side of it is something can be something could be handled at that moment. If you had just spoke up at that right time, the situation or whatever is wrong could have been nipped in the bud. That's why it's a thin line to um, bite in your tongue. That's why you got to pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah for discernment. And you got to pray for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to give you the spirit to say what's right. You know, I pray and hope that y'all brothers is understanding and following along to the lesson. It says, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. So you don't want to be condemned because you hold it on to shit. Instead of just speak it up. Every time a brother do something, you just hold it on. Instead of the scripture say a little leaven leaveneth leaveneth the whole lump. You gotta be able to talk to a brother. And if you're a shy brother or you're not an outspoken brother, you pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to give you the spirit. You pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to open up an opportunity to talk to the brother. You gotta remember we're spiritual men. And you got to remember we ain't effeminate. You got to remember that we don't deal with things how we used to deal with things in the world. We're supposed to be men of the Most High. And as men of the Most High, we conduct ourselves according to as it is written of the men of the Most High. Hmm. <sighs> Um, pretty much that's it. That's it. I pray and I hope that y'all was edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakwadash. Leave your comment for giving me the spirit, uh, for doing this lesson. And, um, leave your comments, do your responses. Until next time, I say Shalom.